criminals that work for these world sort of organizations and uh, bureaucracies and governments all around the world have committed or at least advocated, implemented, enforced policies that led to the utter destruction of many aspects of not just America, uh, other countries, because it was in the name of this COVID bullshit. And I'm very frustrated because there's a story that, of course, Chris, Chris Enlow of Blaze did a great job of kind of packaging this together as they. This is a way that they did it in, in a way to basically rid themselves of any sort of blame. I know I've talked about it and voiced my frustration and just the simple fact that, look, these people are getting away with their crimes, the crimes that they have committed over the last couple of years even as certain areas return to some sort of normalcy, dude, they're still getting, it just, it sucks because all of these criminals that participated in the charade that led to so many different bad things are seeming to get away with the crimes. Okay. So let's cover this. WHO nearly triples global, uh, global COVID-19 deaths after factoring in deaths linked indirectly to COVID-19. Process that statement real quick as I take a sip. The WHO nearly tripled the global COVID-19 mortality figure on Thursday after taking into consideration indirect, allegedly related uh, to the uh, pa pandemic. It's indirect death, excuse me. The WHO previously reported 5.4 million COVID deaths in 2020 and 2021, but the organization revised that number to 14.9 million after they added what they claim to be an estimation of the number of excess mortality deaths. That means the WHO believes there were 9.5 million more deaths related to the pandemic in 2020 and 2021 than previously believed. Excess mortality according to WHO, is calculated as the difference between the number of deaths that have occurred and the number of deaths that would be expected in the absence of the pandemic based on data from earlier years. For example, people who died because they were unable to receive proper hospital care due to the height of the pandemic when hospitals were overcrowded is considered an excess fatality. And uh, it's, it looks at a statement here. It says excess mortality includes death associated with COVID-19 indirectly due to the disease or uh, uh, directly due to the disease or indirectly due to the pandemic's impact on health systems and society. Deaths linked indirectly to COVID-19 are attributable to other health conditions for which other people were unable to access prevention and treatment because of health systems were over uh, burdened by the pandemic. The estimated number of excess deaths can be uh, influenced also by deaths averted during the pandemic due to lower risk of certain events like uh, motor vehicle accidents or occupational injuries. The, the excess deaths were concentrated in Europe, Southeast Asia and the and uh, the Americas, while the majority were male, fifty seven percent, and um, that was fifty seven percent and older adults. However, the actual number of deaths will probably never be known. After all, uh, many health agencies still do not distinguish. That's true uh, between deaths with COVID, meaning people who die while having a COVID infection, and deaths from COVID, those who are caused uh, directly uh, by this. It says uh, India reported also this is something else they wanted to add. India reported just over 40, uh, 480,000 COVID deaths in 2020 and 2021. But the WHO estimates the country had 4.7 million excess deaths in response to India questioning the WHO's methodology. This is all fucking politics. Through the process of dialogue, engagement and communication with WHO, WHO has projected different excess mortality figures. For India citing multiple models, which itself raises uh, questions on the validity of the robustness of the models used. A modeling approach which provides mortality estimates on the basis of another estimate while totally disregarding the actual data available to the country exhibits lack of academic rigor. I know they don't like 
so there's, there's a couple of things to take from this that I want you guys to consider. Number one, you see that the, this high kind of, kind of emphasis on India, which is a massive country, by the way, heavily populated, uh, though they didn't seem to have the deaths that would that you would think a country that massive would have. Now, for those of you, I won't tell you, talk about it on uh, YouTube. This would be an Odyssey exclusive. Uh, but you guys know that uh, there, there was something that Indians were doing in terms of what they were giving their citizens. WHO didn't like that. Um, also, so they may try to signal to the fact that, OK, this is, uh, oh, I guess, is what they say, lack of academic rigor regarding these numbers. But we know exactly why it was that they focus on that. Also, they, they have to blame a lot of the deaths. There's two things that I want you to take in consideration, like I said. But they also have to f uh, account for deaths. When you look at these other countries, these like uh, uh, like they have a lot of cold spots. Um, you know, they they still wanted to make this a lot more dramatic than what they initially anticipated. So they looked at countries that had like you look at countries that had or continents, excuse me, that had cold that were cold spots. Africa, Africa, Africa did not have the the deaths and despair that they should have had. Any event that that um you know it was as dangerous as what they said that it was. And of course, they would attribute that to something else. But there's also other things to take into consideration as they gas these numbers up. They'll never, ever concede the deaths from despair. And that's what sucks. Deaths from despair. What that is are deaths that are that come in the way of which doesn't seem to be included it, it, unless they're trying to include it in a cover up. It doesn't seem to be concluded uh, or included in these numbers. Where so many people die due to various reasons, not because of COVID directly, you want to talk about indirectly, but because of the government's actions and to what the, 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 the implementation, or again, of these different various laws and mandates and other things that, let's say, prevented people from being able to operate their business. Well, you have poor areas and nations that depended on tourism. Uh, they could not have people go there, not because they like people weren't willing to go there. It was because the government essentially made it illegal for them to do it and especially do it in return. Deaths from suicide, deaths that are associated with that. They'll never concede, though we know that that number is up there, even for countries that keep up with uh, some of those numbers. And you've seen the increase in and, and suicides and even other things uh, that maybe don't end up or result in death today, but they could at some point and certainly turmoil in someone's life, domestic violence and other things like that, that, that it increased due to, again, not the virus, the government's action and how they responded to it. That's what happened. So as we talk about these and they gas these numbers up, what they'll never do is put it on themselves. They'll never do that. The WHO will never put it on themselves. Hell, WHO had to admit General Tedros that they got it wrong in writing off that it was a possible lab leak. They wrote it off early on. Oh, no way they could have. And then the Chinese seemed to stop being as cooperative as they would have liked them to be. And now all of a sudden, Oh, well, we, we probably shouldn't have wrote that off. Oh, you think? It's almost as if your conclusions seem to be entirely politically motivated, not rooted in science or anything. And again, if there is something that sucks from it all is that, man, these criminals are going to get away with their crimes. You just listened to a clip from my podcast, For Cannon's Sake, which is live throughout the week at 12 p.m. Central on YouTube.com slash YoungRipper59 and Odyssey.com slash at YoungRipper59. Be sure to check out my website, EricDJuly.com, so you can stay up to date with everything it is that I'm doing. You can also become a member and get access to a bunch of cool perks and exclusive content, which includes a social media hub where you can interact with myself and other members. It even has an app that you can get, which is now live in the Google and Apple stores.